This is part 10 in a series of videos in which I'm attempting to repair and restore a pair of HP 9120A printers. This is the first one. I'm getting fairly close to the uh, end of the restoration on this one. I've uh, completely rebuilt the print mechanism. I've been through the electronics, completely stripped the unit down and uh, I've been through it as far as I can in kind of a static mode, just doing some basic testing and um, we now got to the point where it's time to start trying to run it. In the previous video I did power it up, we turned it on and we were able to get the paper advance to do its thing and um, pressing the paper advance button caused the head to move across. We don't know if anything else is working yet, that's what we'll look at in this video. Notice I have not yet refitted the print head, I'll be rebuilding that in a completely separate video uh, in this video I just want to look at a couple of things. The first one is how to actually adjust the print head. Now, I've worked on a number of these and I've never yet seen one that's had the print head properly adjusted. So you will need to do this if you replace the rubber roller. Um, you probably need to do it anyway as the plastics age they tend to shrink and it uh, tends to cause a misalignment uh, of the print head. Quite often the printer will continue to work, this won't work very well and it will tend to wear out very quickly. So I just want to go over the adjustment, um, what it's for and how to make it. It is fairly uh, obscure, it's quite hard to show, I can't really show you in detail because it's hard to see but the adjustment we're talking about is the adjustment for the pressure of the metal fingers that press against the underside of the roller. So. If you recall when we rebuilt the printer there were some metal fingers that sit underneath the roller. You probably can't see them, I'll try lifting this up, but you can't really see them. Maybe you can just see the edge of them and notice there are two sets of them. Uh, the reason there are two sets is so that the unit can detect the paper. So this is an example of the paper that's used in this. Um, it's got uh, aluminium on one side and although the original um, paper used a slightly different principle from the way uh, this paper works, uh, it was still metal coated and this printer does rely on that. So the reason there are two sets of metal fingers, there's a wire going to each one, is so that the printer can um, detect the paper, it detects the uh, path between the two fingers that's only present when there is some paper um, bridging that gap. So that's the first thing. So the upshot of this really is if you try to test one of these, firstly you need to have the um, calculator plugged in or you need to jump uh, the uh, connector, the interface connector, or this won't power up. The reason for that is we've got this relay here and that is controlled indirectly through the interface. So uh, you can of course bridge this or you could actually move the jumpers on the uh, relay connectors to get this to power up all the time. Uh, it's not a good way of doing it because this switch, the power switch or the on-off switch works in a bit of an odd way. Um, it's not just uh, power, it's a logic control device as well. Uh, so it's best if you've got a, a cal calculator to plug it in, just be sure that uh, there aren't any faults that are going to damage the calculator. Um, the second thing is without any, although the paper feed will work with um, no paper, of course, you need to be able to do that uh, to be able to feed uh, fresh paper through, um, it won't print. So without any paper, although you'll be able to make it do a paper feed cycle, uh, even if you turn uh, various uh, register switches to the on position, uh, you can't either list, nothing will happen, or if you try pressing the print key on the calculator, nothing will happen you must have paper in otherwise the printer won't really do anything. So the point I'm at now is I want to start trying to see if the printer will respond to print commands. Before I do that I just want to go over the adjustment for the print mechanism. I've already adjusted this but uh, there are basically two things you need to adjust. The first one is there is a uh, an Allen key style adjuster. You won't be able to see it, but it's kind of all the way in there under the roller. If you look under the roller in the center, there is um, an Allen key head that you can see. 
and that's what this allen key is now in and uh, you adjust this by of course turning the allen key the other thing that you may need to adjust is the actual pressure plates the fingers themselves um, I generally when I have these taken out I make them flat uh, but often what you need to end up with is to have them curved uh, downwards and before we go any further I just want to explain what this adjustment's for as I said I've never seen one of these correctly adjusted um, but just to explain what the adjustment really does before we look at it in more detail uh, a comment on a previous video somebody said that the reason these two clutches are here is to allow um, the paper to be pulled through uh, if you need to do that and although the clutches do allow the roller to be rotated in its forward direction that's not what these are for and in fact you probably find that if you tried pulling the paper through this wouldn't turn anyway um, what's supposed to happen is as well as this plastics white plastic piece being a paper guide it's also a tension release mechanism for the paper so it might so be a bit vague and it's a very critical adjustment now I don't know if you can see the fingers are currently touching the rubber roller but if I lift this up I again don't know if you can see but there is now a very small gap um, between the end of the fingers and the rubber roller and what I can do now is I can feed paper through that gap so if I try and feed this paper in it will now go through and fit between the fingers and the roller so this is now free it will move in and out quite freely it's not uh, catching and you can see or well, hopefully you can see it's moving quite freely but if I put this back down the fingers come down and they grip the paper so this is now gripped fairly tight it won't move if I lift this back up this will just come out so that's what the adjustment is for it is important of course that when the uh, arm is down the fingers make contact with the paper or the printer won't work it won't detect the paper and also even if it could uh, be made to run it wouldn't print anything because it relies on that uh, current path being complete uh, also while we're talking about that the paper is effectively grounded although it, the system detects the um, presence of the paper the paper is at ground and it has to be that way because of course somebody might touch the paper when it's printing and if it was at a high voltage then um, obviously it would be a bad thing uh, so this adjustment um, there is a cam on the end of this uh, white lever now before you start trying to make this adjustment just be uh, aware if you adjust it incorrectly you will destroy this white plastic piece and that will effectively write off your printer your chances of finding one of those or being able to make one is uh, very remote so you can start by taking the top guide off and before we look at the adjustment itself I'll just explain how the adjustment works I made a couple of uh, very simple Dave Cad style drawings um, so what we have if we kind of boil this down we've got the rubber roller which is this circle here uh, this triangle although it's again hard to see there is a release lever it's kind of a cam system and that is pushed down or it's rotated when you lift up the white plastic lever and the tip of it pushes down uh, on the um, the metal fingers so this thicker line is the metal fingers and it's got this um, bend up at the end and that's the end of the fingers we were just looking at what the adjustment does what the screw does that the allen key goes into is it effectively moves this uh, set of fingers back and forth um, it, it adjusts the tension of the tip uh, on the roller but um, it does so by moving the um, the whole assembly back and forth so if you screw the allen key one way the um, the fingers will effectively be in one position if you screw it further it will move the fingers out and if you screw it the other way it will move the fingers in one of the issues you have to deal with is that um, what I normally find on these is the roller is actually running on the uh, face of the fingers it's not running on this tip 
and that's largely because the plastic shrinks over the years and this end tends to move up and that means that there is no clearance here so that's why often you need to bend these levers it's fixed here of course so this section is kind of bolted, there's a screw going through, so that's fixed. So quite often what you have to do is just gently bend this down. Uh, again, I'm exaggerating the amount you have to do it, uh, but also you must make sure they're all identical to each other, all the fingers must be the same. You want an even gap when the uh, release lever is moved. Uh, also, you need to do this in conjunction with the screw adjuster and this release uh, cam. So when you start adjusting it, what you're looking for is to get the uh, tip of the uh, fingers just in contact with the rubber roller when the release cam is released. So that's when the white lever is down. If you screw the adjuster one way, you'll open up this gap. If you find that the lever is rubbing on the underside of the roller, you need to very gently bend all the levers, all the arms, the fingers down by the same amount. Not very much. If you go too far, you'll have to take the whole thing apart, flatten them out and start again. And it is quite a critical adjustment. It's a very fine adjustment. And if you screw the adjuster the other way, of course, you'll tend to move the other way. And what you're aiming for is to have the... Um, what we have on this uh, machine where with the release lever tilted down that's when the white lever is up you have a very small gap so the paper comes in through here goes around the roller and up through this gap so it's this gap here that is the uh, critical part it needs to be just enough to allow the paper to smoothly slide in and out when the plastic lever is raised but to be closed up when the plastic lever is down so if um, so, we have the release lever in the released position in all three of these uh, drawings. Uh, the top one is correct. The bottom one, the fingers are too far out, and the oh, sorry, the middle one, the fingers are too far out, and the bottom one, the fingers are too far in. And as I say, the adjustment is very fine. It's about a quarter of a turn, one way or the other, with the adjuster. And so you might find that as you start turning it, nothing seems to be happening. But uh, if you keep going, don't go too far. If you have to go a very long way, then something's wrong. Um, but if you uh, keep turning, eventually you should find that you can have um, the right setting. When you're making the adjustment, if you find that uh, you've made an adjustment, but when you try and move the lever, it's very tight. Don't force it. It means your adjustment's incorrect readjust and as I said what you're looking for is with this up it should come up fairly easily but with it raised you have a very small gap and you should be able to slide a piece of paper in there try and get on the camera you should be able to slide a piece of paper in there um, without it binding and then when you move the lever down it should grip the paper fairly firmly okay so that's the purpose uh, of the adjustment it's a bit of a fiddle and uh, but it's not it's not too difficult it's just a bit fiddly to do uh, just be patient and uh, don't go too far at once it's a very fine adjustment uh, the printer will tend to work if it's not correct but um, you might end up breaking something or the paper tearing or uh, just not working properly okay so once you've done that uh, you'll find that you can very easily load the paper okay so I've got a piece of paper here I've just taken this off a reel and um, with the lever in the raised position, we should be able to fairly easily just slide this through. It shouldn't take a lot of tension. So you can see here that it's very easily moving. If it doesn't do that, you've got the adjustment wrong. And we should then find also that when we lower the lever, so when we lower this lever, it should grip the paper. So now the paper is quite firmly gripped and it's going to be driven with the roller. Of course this uh, bit just sits on, uh, on the top here and guides the paper in. Uh, this is captive as well so as you li lift this it'll get captive under here and push it back down so now everything is ready to go. I'll power up the uh, calculator, we'll power up the uh, printer and see how it goes.
Okay, I'll just rotate this so hopefully you can see it a little bit better. Turn the power on, turn the calculator on. Just wait for the calculator display to come on. Okay, the calculator display is now back on. So what I can do now is turn this on, this will start the motor up. If you don't have it plugged into the calculator then nothing will happen when you push this button in, even if you have power going to it. And we should now be able to feed paper, which we can. Okay, so that's the motor started up. Uh, what we can do now is try um, getting the printer to actually print. So we'll select one of the registers and I'm going to press print on the calculator and this should cause the printer to go through a print cycle, which it is doing. Of course, nothing's coming on the paper because, as I said, we don't have the print head fitted. Uh, but what we can do now to see if anything's actually working is just temporarily connect um, a conductor to one of the uh, output transistors and see if we can get anything to appear on the paper. So I do not suggest you do this unless you know exactly what you're doing. Um, but I'm going to connect this to one of the transistors. Also be uh, aware there's some fairly high voltages on this uh, PCB. And what I'm going to do now is um, press the list button on the printer. This causes the um, printer to try to pull the entire contents of memory from the calculator, so it'll just keep repeatedly trying to print. And at the same time, I'm going to drag this across the surface of the paper. So firstly, that's working. Okay, so I'm going to turn it off. Although it's probably going to be very difficult for you to see this, there are marks appearing on the paper. Very fine because we've got a very small area of contact on the paper. Um, but we have got uh, marks appearing where I dragged the uh, conductor across the paper. So these little black marks, I'm not, I'm not sure if you can see them or not. Um, but that's a good sign that there is data coming out of the uh, control transistors and uh, current flowing through the paper back through to ground and uh, also because they're intermittent they're not it's not a single line all the way across um, it does tend to indicate that um, it is trying to print some actual data whether it's correct or not I'm not sure we can also do is put a scope let's turn this around a bit further I'll just move the camera so you can see this a bit more clearly okay so you've got um, eight transistors here and seven of them are to control the current flowing to the print head and the one at the back left here is to control the clutch so what you can do is put a scope on any of these try and do a print and see if uh, you're getting the data that you'd expect for the clutch you'll get quite a long pulse at the beginning of uh, each line and from all the other ones uh, you'll get uh, data that's dependent on what it's trying to print. So there'll just be negative going spikes that you'll see on each of these lines. Uh, the um, cases of these transistors are connected directly to the output um, traces. So rather than risking damaging the traces with your scope probe, you can just uh, probe the cases of these transistors and it will give you the same data. And uh, as I say, what you're looking for, and this is relative to ground, what you're looking for is uh, negative going pulses uh, each time there should be a dot appearing on a particular print head line. Um, I've actually done that already, I won't do it on uh, this video. If you want to see that then let me know and I'll put that into a future video. Um, but all these seem to be working and um, the next thing to do really is to get the print head repaired and uh, refitted everything else seems to be working I've got the adjustment correct uh, on the uh, print head as we saw on the uh, roller rather and um, the print head will then just need adjusting uh, once it's been rebuilt okay so the next uh, video is to try and rebuild the print head um, whether that will be successful or not I'm not sure but certainly the rest of the printer is now doing exactly what it's supposed to